What is up guys? It is the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One. And we're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater War. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. And that is what Jano Matherly uh, did. He asks, I'm thinking about getting into tabletop. Where is the best place to buy models outside of the GW store? Good question, especially if you live in America, because uh, GW stores are very few and far between. Mm -hmm. um, well, the, the farther you get from the city. Because yeah. if, if you live in a major city, you're fine. Right. Um, so the best way, the uh, best outlet is eBay. Right. eBay has tons of stuff. They've got... Uh, like if you they, you could look at anything whether it's out of production models built painted armies bits anything like that ebay's got it um, you might have to search for a little while <coughs> you might have to win some bids but it's there yeah the the tips that i would recommend when shopping on ebay is uh number one if you, if you want a new model go for um or buy your stuff in bulk so that the shipping could all be uh, one cost. Right. And what ends up happening is that like the eighty-five dollar um, starter set you can get on eBay right now for like sixty-nine dollars, and that's if you just want to buy it now with like maybe a five dollar uh, shipping charge. So you're still getting it like at seventy something dollars, uh, seventy-four dollars, uh, whereas you were getting it eighty-five at a GW store plus tax. Um, so it even comes out to like almost a hundred dollars buying new things on eBay at first might be a little like sketchy but once you actually start um, you know getting into it you realize it's not bad at all some of them don't come with the boxes but who cares like you don't really need the boxes right. as long as it's on the sprue as long as everything's there that's all that matters yeah and the reason that those companies are selling those things is because I think uh, they're kind of like the the hobby sh stores where like Warhammer is not as popular so now they have all this back stock and they try to discount it but still nobody buys it so they sell it um, on eBay so I would recommend buying even new things on, on eBay um, and then also filtering right away go into ending soonest that way you could see the ones that have you could see the models that have um, usually the lowest bids because whenever people bid they usually bid all crazy and then right before um, it's gonna go out um, the the bidding stops for a little bit, and that, that's when you could bid. Right. Don't just keep on bidding back and forth when you've got like four days left, because you're you're gonna screw yourself over. Watch the item, keep your eye on it, <coughs> and once there's like two minutes left, then that's when you gotta hop on and get your uh, fingers ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, wait to the last what two seconds? Yeah. <laughs> Because a lot of times it's like somebody bid, oh, they outbid you, oh, and then by the time you're typing it out, yeah, it's, it's too late. Yeah. It's happened to me countless times. <laughs> but yeah, um, like, like you were talking about earlier, hobby shops. Um, if you want to go to a brick and mortar store, some, most hobby shops, at least that I know of, that I've been to, they carry uh, fantasy stuff, Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40k stuff, and it's not always the newest, but oftentimes they've got you know, some random stuff you won't even think about. And they have them for sale, which mm -hmm. is insane for uh, GW stuff. Because GW stuff is like Apple stuff. It never goes yeah. on sale. Uh, but if you go to like a game store, um, we have those here in, in our area. Uh, they have buy two, get one 50% off. So you buy some two big or three big items, like you're saving yourself a lot of money. Yeah. Also, uh, what was it you said? There's some bookstores that sell used books. You found some cool Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, there's a store here, a secondhand store called Second and Charles. Uh, and Codex is from before there. And you could even... Sometimes you can get lucky and get, like, the most recent Codex. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to hit that place up today if I have the chance because I bet you a bunch of 7th edition uh, Codexes yeah. are going to be out. Yeah. And yeah. also check uh, garage sales. Um, when I was younger, this, this sucks, but I went to a garage sale. And they had an awesome uh, Warhammer Fantasy stuff. I want to say it was like dwarves or something like that. And I didn't know what it was at the time. I thought it was cool, but I never bought it. I'm like, oh, these are just overpriced toys. Yeah. But looking at it now, I'm like, oh, damn. Should have got it. Yeah. But yeah. Good question. Next one. I have one. Whoop. I got one right here. Yep. Since they've been reading books, or since I've been reading books on Gene Stealer Colts, I've always had this question. 
Can a gene stealer cult rebel against their mother, High Fleet? No. Um, if that happens, the patriarch would just consume whoever's trying to rebel. Right. So I wouldn't say like, no, it doesn't happen, but yes, it can happen because there's multiple generations and like the initial generations of, um, or no, not the initial generations, probably the, the generations of gene stealers that are most like the inhabited world. So like, I guess the most human, they have the most ability to like, maybe think outside of their regular life hive mind and rebel, but if that happens, the patriarch comes in, kills them, and um, tries to find out why that happened, kill whoever uh, was implanting that gene. Right. Um, so that it goes away. Yeah, because the more generations you have, because the whole thing about gene stealer cults is to infiltrate. Obviously, when you first get a you know, gene stealer infiltration, they look like tyrannids. And then you get like aberrants that look like hawking beasts, and then you get closer and closer and closer. So they look exactly like that population that you're trying to <coughs> to uh, infiltrate. Yeah. So maybe Gersh is a gene stealer right now. Maybe. maybe. We would never know. Until the patriarch comes and cuts <laughs> off my head because I'm rebelling. Next question comes from Caboose N N Z 69 With the grays in the big dark suit that's bigger than the rest from episode 24 and 25 of Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphan Season 1 be the closest version of an Imperial Dreadnought in the Gundam lore to the way the pilot is connected to the suit by direct neural link. Never seen Gundam. Yeah, well, I've seen Gundam, but I haven't seen that specific one. Uh, but if there is a neural link from the pilot to its suit, that is kind of what a Dreadnought is. But a Dreadnought, it's like you're legit. You're, you're effed up, that is your life support, and there's no way of getting you out of a dreadnought without killing you. Yeah. So, yes and no, maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? You're not the boss of me now. You're not the boss, yeah. Next question comes from Tabris Razel. Razel, Razel. Since I've been, oh, you read that already. <laughs> okay, Rigel PT. How do Tyranids invade a water world, even if they do? It's really interesting because what they do is they send in drop pods, um, or not drop pods, but they send in their miasmic spores into the water. The, they, they float, and then they start spreading little mini Tyranids um, to start disrupting the, the, the life around them. So then, and then you get some like awesome like plesiosaur Tyranids and like shark Tyranids. It's... They really need to make those, but they won't. Yeah, because they don't like water in 40k. Yeah. Uwe Martyr, do you think that there could be a return of the Catan Void Dragon and the Outsider? I mean, the Outsider can't stay in exile forever, and the Void Dragon can't be imprisoned forever on Mars. There has to be a way for them to finally come into the lore. So I haven't done 40 facts on the Outsider yet. It, it is in the back of my mind, um, but basically, there's a lot of rumors saying that the Outsider is what's actually controlling the Tyranids. The Outsider has been exiled outside of the galaxy, and he's the one sending the Tyranids over to feast or whatever. So, will he be implemented, hopefully, when the new uh, Necron Codex drops? And then, will anything happen with the Void Dragon? I don't hopefully. know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it is the Omnissiah, something big is going to involve it. Hopefully, when the Dark Mechanicus Codex comes out. I really want that to come out. I haven't heard anything of it. There's never been a Dark Mechanicus Codex, right? Nope. Uh, Forge Road has one, right? Mm, not that I think. I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think they have like the Traitor Mechanicum, but I don't know if that's the Dark. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Next question comes from Vidmonster. In relation to the 30 foot, the yeah, 30 foot long place firmly between Rogaldorn's buttocks, what kind of wood is it? So apparently, uh, Rogodorn has a stick up his butt that's 30 feet long, and it is balsa wood. Oh, that's a nice stick of wood. Mm -hmm. Wolfie of Honor, why is this show called For the Greater Wa? Are you heretics? Some kind of orc-human hybrids trying to spread virtual spores through the internet? Kinda. Yeah, I mean, in a way, you're kinda right. Um, it's not orc-human, it's uh, orc-tau. Yep. So Tau is my main army, even though I haven't played it in 8th edition yet. For the greater... 
good. And then, wow, for orcs. Because I played orcs all my life. Well, that's not true, but yeah. <laughs> the next question comes from Haram Bo H. Have you heard of the metal band called Bolt Thunder? They did a lot of songs based on Warhammer. Oh, that's pretty cool. Never heard of it, but no. I think I, I might check it out. Yes. <laughs> Michael Howell. What do I have to do to get love like Dragon Punch 903 and John Redcorn? So I guess we answer their questions a lot because their questions tend to be closer to the, uh, the top. And they post multiple questions. Um, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they post most of them. They post multiple questions. Um, and I think theirs gets thumbed up. Yeah. So if you put up a good question, it'll get thumbs up and you'll be... Honored by having us read it. Next question comes from Lord Armsworth. Will you ever make a For the Greater Wa drunk? That could honestly be hilarious. Please do this at some point. Who's to say these aren't all <coughs> drunk For the Greater Wa? Exactly. Joke's on you, because you've already watched like four of them. <laughs> all Might. From the Xenos races that we have heard about so far, which one would you like to have a model be released for? Out of what? The Xenos races that we've seen. Oh. Well, so I'm assuming ones that don't already have a model? Squats. Are squats considered Xenos or are they abhumans? They're abhumans, but that's considered Xenos. Like Xenos is just alien. Yeah. Um, so it's out of the Imperium. And yes, they are out of the Imperium. Uh, so squats. I would say the Taloran Dog Warriors from the Tau. So they're a race of like dog humanoids that the Tau have incorporated into their empire, kind of like the Vespids. Um, there, there's little snippets of it in the lore. I think there's like one or two images out there from like... That really, are really good. Yeah, really good, but they're like really old. I think it was from like Xenology was what the book was called, but yeah. And there's even some models. I'm thinking of the models in terms of the image, but there's an... Because I've always seen them and I'm like, oh, that's just like some goofy looking... Uh, Tau guy, but no, it's like a, a dog looking Tau guy. That's pretty cool. That would be cool. Do they bark? Is their bite worse than their bark? <laughs> Next question comes from Bread by Bayoto. Have you gays seen <laughs> the Wolf Rain cereal or no more toe speech? Tau speech. Wolf Rain? Wolf's Rain? Is that an anime? Because if it is, I've seen it. So it involves people that turn to wolves. <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay, no, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen all of it. I, it was on Toonami like years ago and I saw a few episodes. I never knew what the plot was, but I thought it was cool. Because one of the voice actors was a Thai from Digimon. Digimon? Digital mm -hmm. Monsters? Digimon are the champions. <laughs> Last question. Do you have one? I do. This one's by Bay G Main. Do you think that the Slan and or the Rack Goal will become playable races in 40k? No. Unfortunately not. The Rack Goal are kind of stupid uh, and mysterious and I think that's what they're going to be kept as because they're really good fluff for, um, what is it, Dark Heresy? Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the, the old ones are just going to, like, before they bring the old ones back, they're going to touch up on all the other races. And by that point... Um, ninth edition's coming out, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those were the questions for this, for the greater law. If you got more questions, answer them, or ask them in this one, or the next one, or the one following it, because we will get to it eventually. With that said, guys, this is Gershwin. Sound Alchemist, signing out. out.